I want to talk about being still and knowing that God is God. We get so caught up in what we're doing every day. We have problems, we have issues, uh, we have bills, we have so many things that are going on. And before we know it, we've lost years, decades, running after these problems. But yet the things that are most important for the lifting of our soul and to feeling good about ourselves are lost. And I will look at this, this problem that, that we have through the 23rd Psalm. And also, I dare you, while we're going through all this, to think of the times that you had time to sit and think and that's why vacations are, are so important. That's why recreation is so important. But you don't have to travel. You, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get this thing done. All you need to do is know how to sit quietly in a room and rest and let your thoughts come to you. And David speaks about these things in the 23rd Psalm. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want And that is a problem for us because sometimes we're not being led by God, but we have all these things that we think we need, that we want, and when we in the situation of, of wanting, could it be that we have not stopped and used the power of stillness to, to sit down and, and to see how God may lead us to distill waters, to, to bring your pastures? And when David spoke about these things, he, he mentions he mentioned, uh, something that I think that we, we miss or I have missed. And he spoke about how, 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 how blessings shall follow him all the days of his life. And when I read it in, in, in the Hebrew context, what it means that they shall chase him. That they shall, that, that they shall be a pursuit after him. That means that, that while we think that things are chasing us, that while we're running the rat race, it, it may be that if we just stop and be still, that the lessons of the world are that have been chasing us, It's important that you stop and be still. How else are you going to hear about the direction? How else are you going to hear about the heart? You see, because it's not what's outside of you that's going to give you what you need. It's what's inside of you. And, and how are you going to hear what's inside of you unless you take time to listen? And that's why stillness with God is so important. That's why God gave us these words, to be still and know that he is God. It just means to stop and recognize. And once you stop and, and, and your soul comes back to you, not what people are saying, not what what's going on around you, not what what's bothering you, not the people who, who you want to tell off, not the bills that you have to pay, not your singleness, not your marriedness, but what is within you, what is it is it's inside you. And when you come back to yourself, it, it's like it's like being the 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 um the prodigal son. When you come back to yourself after running riotous, after so many things, when you come back to, to yourself, you realize that you're so much more for you and you go back the thing about the Lord is that when you stop and you realize just how much he has for you and, and how much you're running after things have brought you to a place where you're in a pit style of sorts and when you come back to, to the Lord it's an amazing thing and sometimes we don't want to come back because we are concerned about the shame and, and, and how it might look like Naomi when she came back in the book of Ruth, and she said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. We have to come back because we have to really believe that, that, that God is greater than our shame. God is greater than our needs. God is greater than anything we, we have done. And by being still and recognizing that he is God, we're able to be our best selves. And all of a sudden, the things that we worried about are solved. It's, it's like being Moses and worrying about how, how he's going to get the thing done. And God tells him, what is it you have in your hand? And you realize that all this running around that you had the blessings in your hand. Or it's like, it's, it's like being, I'm sorry, it's, 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 it's like being, it's, it's like being Abraham. And then realizing that, thinking that he has to sacrifice his child. And we might, in our religiosity, feel that these things have to be done. These vicious things, these things have to be done. We find that just by recognizing God, following God, 
that what we thought was going to be a disaster for us, that there is a ram in the bush. And you can't see a ram in the bush. You can't realize how great your father's household is. You can't realize what you have in your hand. You can't realize the, the wealth he has placed within you. He said, we're wonderfully and fearfully made. And if you are not realizing the wealth that you have w within you, you lose. Because it's only through what you have in you, your gifts shall make room for you, that you shall ever get the job done. So take this dare, take this challenge I have before you. Take time and be still and know that he is God. Thank <laughs> you.